So guys, I'm gonna tell you, today's video is about wheel spacers. So if you wanna share why this is the stupidest upgrade that you can make to your tractor, be sure and jump down in the comments and start a good argument about that because we like to hear what you have to say. But we're gonna do some tests and see what a difference it makes on our Kubota BX. Come on. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for the specific spacers that I went with because they were under 40 bucks. Well, hey there, hubby homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. Today, we are out here with the Kubota on our steep hillside to do a demonstration. Now, I'm counting on the post office to follow through because we have something coming in the mail today that should be here any minute that we're going to install on this tractor to make it more stable. But I'm gonna demonstrate to you how tippy this tractor can be on steep hills, and we're gonna see if we can't fix that. Now, there are a couple of concerns when it comes to installing wheel spacers on the back wheels of your Kubota. And some of those concerns may be valid, and some may not, but there are definitely some things you need to know before you place an order, because there can be some clearance issues if you go with too big of wheel spacers, depending on which mid-mount mower attachment you have. Now, the first thing I'll say is I don't have necessarily a method to determine what the slope is right here, but I can tell you I have it on a slope which is about the steepest slope that I am comfortable mowing without any kind of wheel spacers or any, anything else to stabilize the tractor. Now, we do have loaded rear tires, which help some. Overall, this is about as steep as I wanna mow on, and I'll show you why. Now, with the Kubota on this bank right here, all it takes is a little bit of pushing and I can raise the rear tire off the ground right here with it on that bank right there. Let me show you. So that kind of shows you where we're at in terms of center of gravity on this tractor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install our inch and a half wheel spacers that we ordered, bring it back to this exact same location and see just how easy it is to tip after that. And the other factor that we wanted to share with you is the fitment because we went with inch and a half wheel spacers because I don't want overkill. I don't want my tractor to be much wider than it is because I want to be able to fit in narrow spots. So I didn't go with the biggest wheel spacers you can find. And my other concern was how big can you go before you start interfering with the uh, wheels on the mid-mount mower. You can see we have a limited amount of space right here between the tire and the uh, mid-mount mower wheels. So we don't wanna to go too big and cause interference. And if you have a 54 inch deck, then this problem may even be magnified. There are several forums that you can go on and read other people's experiences and they post in the comments what they're running on their tractor or what they did to make those spacers fit. Some people have cut these wheel mounts off and welded them further out to create more space. And everybody's needs are going to be different. Some people don't work on steep banks or some people are just more comfortable with their butt in the seat of the tractor than others. So I'm not saying the wheel spacers are for everybody and I'm not saying that they don't have their downfalls. For starters, when you bring the wheels further out, you're putting more stress on the axle components and the bearings. So that's something to consider when you make the decision of whether to put spacers on or not. My theory is there were loads and loads of tractors made back in the day and even still today with rear wheels that spin in and out for this very situation. So there's no doubt that wheel spacers make a difference, but I don't know if an inch and a half will be enough that we can tell a difference or not. So we're gonna do this test and find out and I'll share with you the results. test them out. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited to see how this works out. All 
All right, guys, now I used my tire tracks to get the tractor back in the exact location it was in when we first did this test. So the low side tire is exactly where I had the low side tire parked before. So we're gonna see if this thing is just as tippy as it was before. Now, the first time I did the test, I kind of did it from a distance like this so you could see the whole tractor. And I can already tell you there's an enormous difference because before, I didn't have to put very much pressure to be able to lift the tire completely off the ground. And now I pretty much got to give it what I got to get it up off the ground. Let me show you up close. Now guys, I understand without some kind of weight measurement, this is not a scientific test, but I can tell an enormous difference in how hard I'm pushing to tip this tractor. So the inch and a half wheel spacers, no doubt made a big difference in how stable this tractor is going to be. And the other thing that I learned is we have plenty of clearance here. I will measure it and show you just exactly how far we have, but the inch and a half spacers are fine. I think two inch spacers probably would still work, but they would be very close. guys so i literally have never ever mowed this bank completely running sideways because it was too steep i couldn't do it as i mowed along you could see i had my front tires turned because they were sliding down the hill but the tractor did, still didn't feel tippy i don't recommend you regularly mowing banks this steep but i put my rops up put my seat belt on in order to demonstrate what you can accomplish if things are set up right with inch and a half spacers. I gotta say, I'm surprised at how pleased I am with these spacers. I think I'm gonna like it. I think I picked the right size. I'm of a mind that the bigger spacer you go with, then the more stress you're going to put on things. And I don't wanna overdo it. And I don't wanna tear something up. So I tried to kind of pick some middle ground and I went with an inch and a half. We had plenty of space to put the inch and a half spacers in, and it definitely made a noticeable difference in the uh, stability of the tractor overall. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Let's go get a tape measure and we'll measure the clearance we've got. Okay, so I've tried to get you set up at an angle where you can really see exactly what you've got here. If we were to move this tire straight out, you could move it out an inch and a half before it would start rubbing on anything here. So if you went with two inch spacers, I think you could get them on there if you have the same R14 tires that I have. Now your tires are going to make a difference. Um, the profile of certain tires probably are not going to have the same clearance as these R14s. I have the Goodyear 26 by 12 by 12 R14 tread tires and I don't know what the measurements will be for R4s or the uh, ag tires or turf tires or whatever you've got on your tractor. So do your homework, but I will say this, I don't know that you could operate this tractor on any steeper bank than I was operating it on. So in my personal opinion, I don't think it's necessary to go any wider than the inch and a half that I went with, at least not for me and my uses. But you make your own decisions. I just like to share information so everybody can see how it works in my day-to-day -day operations and then that can help you narrow down what decisions you need to make when you're operating yours so hope you found this helpful i'm going to leave a link down in the description for the specific spacers that i went with because they were under 40 bucks for a set so for under 40 bucks i feel like i made my tractor safer and they came with red loctite and the lug nuts that you need so no additional purchases necessary. You can pick them up on Amazon, have them in just a couple of days, just like I did. So we would appreciate it if you would use that link if you're gonna make a purchase because then we get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon and it makes it to where we can spend the time to make these videos and share information with you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good day.